Welcome to this video. Uh, in the previous video, we ended with the compare instruction that compares two values in two registers to each other uh, using a subtract operation under the hood. And uh, in this video, we'll talk about code control and how we can use that comparison to our advantage to modify the execution of our code. To make use of this information, we actually need to use something that is called the modifiers. And these are uh, two character or two letters that are appended to some of these instructions that will make it execute under a certain condition. So as you see here in these examples, we have the add, we have the subtract, we have uh, or, exclusive or, and so on. Uh, you can add something called the modifier. So uh, for instance, you can add an EQ to this instruction, and this will make it work if the uh, result of the uh, CPSR, the flags are reflecting a zero value or the Z flag has been set. Uh, there is other, uh, there, there's a lot of these modifiers that kind of alter when this AND instruction will execute, under what condition this AND will execute. Uh, so there is a little bit to cover here. I'm going to uh, maybe give you some information. Uh, you can look up the R modifiers online. Uh, it will show you a complete list of the ones that you, uh, you can use. So here I'm going to give you just a few. Uh, there is the AL, which is the always, it's the given, it's this, this instruction will always execute no matter what. And you, or we usually om omit this uh, append, uh, appendix to the instruction because, uh, so like and, and so let's say this instruction is add, uh, and if you add the AL, it's equivalent to just add. You kind of like, uh, I usually tell uh, people this is equivalent to al in algebra, for example, if you have x, this is equivalent to 1x. We usually don't try the 1 because it's given there's 1, the coefficient of x is just 1. Uh, similarly, there is this modifier, which is the al. If you add it to this instruction, it does not do anything. It's uh, given if you have an instruction without any other modifier, it's the al that is the always modifier. There is no condition. Now, the other one is the EQ. The EQ means that uh, the Z flag has been set, which means there are, the operation resulted in a zero, some previous operation that updated the CPSR. For example, our compare instruction, if these two values of R1 and R2 are equal, it will set the Z flag in the CPSR uh, to one. Uh, so essentially, the if the Z flag is set, that means we had or we we've obtained a zero from some instruction that updated the CPSR. Uh, the other modifier is the NE, which which is the opposite of the Z flag uh, of the EQ, which means that the Z flag is not set, meaning the operation did not result in uh, zero. Let me make this a little bit wider here so you can see. Um, what else I can tell you? Um, there's a couple ones I can mention. There is the uh, uh, greater or equal to the GE. Uh, and then this, uh, there's the greater or equal to and there's the uh, less than a modifier. And the first one uh, basically says if the uh, negative flag uh, is set and the fleet V, the overflow flag is also set, um, or if the negative flag is clear and the V flag is clear, that means the first register is bigger or the first number is bigger than the second number. And I'll give you an example in a second to show you how this works. And the other one is the other way around. So basically, if the N set, uh, the N flag is set and the V flag is clear, or if the uh, N flag is clear and the V set, the V flag is set. Uh, if you are, uh, so let me let me give you just a quick example on this one. For instance, imagine that you are the first number in your register is one one zero zero. And the second number is also 1100. And if you perform the subtraction, you end up with 
0, 0, 0, 0. Now, since we got the result as 0, 0, 0, 0, <coughs> Uh, the negative flag is not going to be set because you did not get a negative number. So this is going to be a zero. And uh, your uh, V flag, the overflow flag, will also be uh, set to zero because this indicates the number, uh, there was no overflow uh, happening uh, in the subtraction. So uh, the GE greater or equal to is valid, right? Because this number is greater or equal to this number um, there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of combinations that we can dive into in terms of you know what flag indicates what and combinations of these flag indicate indicate what but all you need to remember is actually what the what do these uh, uh, what do you call it? modifiers actually represent to do your code I will show you uh, the complete list of the modifiers as you see here and you can look them up if you like uh, on your own to see what they mean uh, so these are the uh, the ones we can add or append to our instruction uh, the al for always eq for equal and e for not equal ge for uh, greater or equal to lt is for less than and so on and the so that's the, the the left column and then the right column explains the combinations of the flag that will reflect that condition and I showed you one of these, which is the greater or equal to um, in our program here. And I explained to you how you can uh, possibly add them to your uh, instruction. So let's do this example. Maybe this will make more sense. Uh, so let's say I am comparing R1 and R2. And like we said, this comparison is going to subtract the value of R1 from R2. And then it will update the CPSR flags, the CBSR is the current program status register, is going to update some of the flags, right? And those, uh, there's there's five condition flags that we care about in terms of uh, negative and overflow and, and things like that. We covered uh, three, we covered the Z flag, which means that the result was a zero. We talked about the N flag, which means the, re the result was negative. And we talked about the V flag to indicate whether or not an overflow, uh, that's the overflow bit. There's another one that's the C flag, which is the carry bit. Um, so altogether, they make five bits of the CPSR, and they are the most significant five bits. These are the five bits that are sitting in the most significant 32 bits, or the, the most significant five bits of the 32 bit of this register. Um, but again, I'm not going to dive too much into this just because of the time and because I'm trying to show you an example of programming. So assume here that I have this comparison and I would like, based on the result, to add, uh, for example, I want to increment the value of R3 by some value, let's say, hypothetically, I want to increment it by five. So if I do this code, if I run this code the way it is, as uh, the comparison is going to execute, the CPSR flags are going to be updated, the add instruction will still execute because it's not um, basing the decision or it's not making up its mind whether or not it's, it's the al right so this we said this is always going to execute this is equivalent to writing add and then append the al to it it's always going to execute but i can actually change that and say you know what i want this uh, i want this instruction to work only if the z flag is set so then i can put the eq after it so let's do uh, an add eq and then we'll do an add an e so technically one of them will execute and the other one should not execute because one instruction will execute if the Z flag is set and one of them will execute if the Z flag is not set. And obviously the, the, the Z or the zero flag will only be set in one case. So only one of these instructions will work. So let me uh, download this code to the board and I'll show you what, how it works. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to run the code down to the compare and then we can step through it. So when I compare these two registers, the CBSR flags are going to be updated uh, accordingly. Now I see here that those flags have been updated. You can see it's uh, actually in red. And um, R2, if you look here, R2 contains 1, 0, which is the value of 2. And R1 contains 1, 1, 0, 1, uh, which is 13. And obviously, if you're subtracting 13 from 2, you're going to get a negative value. So uh, basically, 
R1 is bigger than R2, right? So they're not going to be equal. So if I'm stepping through this code, I uh, see here that um, the, the first increment of R3 did not execute. R3 is still the same value. And then if I execute this one, R3 value has been updated and contained, or we incremented it by five. Uh, we can do something similar uh, instead of just comparing to the Z value. Um, actually, let me clear up this code a little bit so we're not really executing too much code here. Maybe I can... All right, it's not deleting for me. So let me just uh, move a couple of simple numbers here into R1 and R2. Um, or actually also uh, R1, R2, and R3. So move, we'll do, we'll put... 13 here, and then we're going to move 2 into R2, and then let's say uh, move uh, R3. And let's initialize, initialize this to just 0. And instead of now add EQ and add an E, what I'm going to use is the equal, uh, equal or greater than or uh, greater or equal to, or the less than. So instead of the EQ and NE, here I'm going to uh, put the GE and LT. And now I'm going to download this and run it on the board. Okay, so let's execute this. So I'm going to put 13 into R1, 2 in R2, no changes, initialize R3 to 0. And then here I'm going to compare R2 to R1. And R2, like we know, it's actually smaller than R3. So when I executed the greater or equal to, obviously R2 is not greater or equal to R1. So this add instruction did not execute. If it did, we would have seen that R3 increment was incremented by five and R3 did not change. On the other hand, this instruction should execute when I step through it. And now I got I have five stored into R three. So uh, in in quick summary about what we've done so far in this video, we talked about the modifiers and we saw how they can alternate the execution of the code, and uh, essentially we alternate the execution based on the flags that we have in the CPSR and the the instruction that did actually update the CPSR flags was the comparison in our case. Um, what I'm going to show you now is the last uh, piece of information. Actually, you can update the, CPR, the CPSR flags after the execution of the instructions. You don't have to, the instructions themselves, you don't have to actually use a comparison after each instruction. Like you don't need to, let's say you're incrementing R5 so many times and you want to increment it again only if there has been no overflow. So it doesn't really make a lot of use to copy this instruction here and just uh, keep comparing, let's say, uh, let's say you can compare R3 to some value or you can compare it to zero or one. So that's very repetitive. So instead of doing that, you can actually add the S modifier to these instructions and they will update the CPSR flags after they finish executing. So uh, essentially, uh, the difference between the CMP and these other instructions is that the CMP will perform a subtract instruction under the hood. It will disregard the results, but will still update the CPSR. If you're using uh, uh, arithmetic instructions and you put the S at the end of these instructions, they will update the CPSR and keep the results, right? In this case, for example, we are going to we are going to update the values of, let me show you, we'll update the values of R3 and uh, update the CPSR. So now the comparison has executed, it updated the CPSR flags. Uh, like we said, this one will not execute because R2 is smaller than R1. But now if you execute this one, you'll see that the flags here have changed because we added this S modifier, okay? Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you another program uh, that will basically use what we've learned in this video. Thank you for watching.